Merrick. How is that? Jennifer sobbed. What have I done? Why are you doing this to me? How many times have I asked you not to call me Merrick? An imposing man in an expensive suit sitting opposite the girl barked. No one would have said that he was over 50. Well-groomed face, fashionable haircut, toned figure. Even the gray hair gave him a special charm. Okay, okay, Mark. Jennifer said hurriedly. Please forgive me. I just don't understand why you suddenly decided to divorce me. Don't you understand? However, it is not surprising. What kind of understanding can you expect from a village girl who has barely graduated from the ninth grade? I've been hoping for so many years that you'd learn something besides spending my money. But the only thing you did was give birth. Well, okay, I gave birth and I gave birth. Although I didn't need a child. Thank God there are four from previous marriages. But you're completely relaxed after giving birth. If I used to go to fitness salons at least, now I don't give a damn about my appearance. And you're only 23. Or do you think that a man like me in his 50s will marry for great and pure love? I needed a wife worthy of my status and position. Beautiful, well-groomed. So that it would not be a shame to show yourself in front of people. I don't care that you're a stuffed fool. This is even a plus to some extent. But you decided with your chicken mind that if you give birth, I'm not going anywhere from you. You can no longer bother to keep track of yourself. Jennifer stared at her husband, her eyes wide with horror. Always so gallant, calm, now he was ready to explode. In general, so. Meanwhile, Mark continued. You have a choice. Either you leave the child to me and roll on all fours, or you are content with what I will allocate to you. And don't try to file for alimony or apply somewhere because in an hour you will find yourself in your godforsaken village without money. You know me. I can do it. Jennifer stood in the middle of a large room and did not believe that this was happening to her. Throughout her short life, Jennifer dreamed of a rich prince and a life of luxury. When the girl realized that she was growing up to be a beauty, she decided that a meeting with the prince was just around the corner. But the men with royal blood did not hurry to their village. Barely waiting for the end of the ninth grade, Jennifer went nowhere but to New York. She was sure that as soon as she stepped onto the asphalt of a big city, she would immediately receive a marriage proposal. But time passed, but offers did not pour in. There were light novels after which Jennifer was thrown like a rag. She got a job as a waitress. Thanks to her slender figure and beautiful face, she was lucky enough to get a job in a nice expensive cafe. The owner of the cafe turned a blind eye to the fact that she was not of legal age. As soon as he was convinced that thanks to a beautiful girl, the influx of customers and consequently revenue had increased significantly. Jennifer tried her best. She knew that how long she would work as a servant depended on her charm and beauty. A couple of years later, she met Mark. He looked at the girl for a long time and appraisingly, and then invited her to dinner together. And Jennifer didn't lose face. The next morning after dinner, she received coffee in bed and an offer to get married. A dream come true. Just don't delay the birth of children. Such a man can only be kept with the help of children. Jennifer had been trying to get pregnant for two years, but it still didn't work out. When this happened and she ran to please her husband, for some reason, he was not happy. Well then, give birth if you decide, he said. After giving birth, Jennifer relaxed. Where will Mark go now? She won't leave her own child how wrong she was. After the divorce, Mark bought Jennifer a room in a large apartment on the outskirts. The room turned out to be quite spacious. If desired, 
it could be divided into two parts. There were other people living in the apartment. The bathroom and kitchen were shared. This is all that was left to her after her marriage to Prince Charming. Mark had no regrets about throwing her and her son out of his life, buying them a room on the outskirts of New York and allocating them a tiny monthly allowance. At first, Jennifer just cried. She had already lost the habit of counting every penny so much that she did not understand where the money was going. I didn't seem to have bought anything like that. I only ordered rolls a couple of times and pizza. Yes, I bought perfume for myself. Mom, I want to eat. Little Tom was looking at her with huge blue eyes and Jennifer only now noticed how thin her son had become. Now, darling. Jennifer rushed to her purse. But there was nothing there. The card. There's definitely money there. The woman decided and ran to the store. I'm sorry, but you don't have enough money. The supermarket saleswoman looked at the beautiful, expensively dressed girl with indifference. Then why don't we put this away? Jennifer took an expensive cheese out of the basket. The card did not pay. When only a pack of cookies remained in the basket, the card finally beeped. Burning with shame, Inga stormed out of the store. There is no money, and Mark S. next transfer is still two weeks away. Jennifer thought about it. Did she spend all the money in less than a week? The girl dialed her ex-husband's number. He listened to her requests and coldly replied, I'm transferring the money to you, as agreed. Everything else is your problem. If you don't have enough, learn to save. The phone rang for a long time. Out of anger, the girl wanted to throw the phone on the asphalt, but caught herself in time. The phone was new and expensive. Suddenly it dawned on her, the phone can be sold. Elated, she flew home. Thrusting a pack of cookies and a glass of milk left over from the evening into her son's hand, Jennifer posted several ads for the sale of the phone. The buyer was immediately found and offered to buy the phone right now. The delighted girl rushed to the meeting. An untidy looking, smiling young man shoved money into her hands, snatched out his phone and disappeared. Surprised by this behavior, Jennifer hurried to the store. A woman! I'm going to call the police! The seller shouted. Are you going to pay me off with fake money of the total amount the guy paid her? Only one $20 bill was real. After buying milk, cereals and bread with it, the girl left the store. Somehow, when she got home, she began to cook porridge. What kind of water are you pouring into the porridge? It was heard from somewhere to the side. Jennifer woke up. She was standing in the kitchen stirring porridge in a saucepan and bursting into tears. In the corner of the room, by the window, in a rocking chair, an old woman sat and looked at her with kind eyes from under her glasses. Everything is going to burn down here. She roused herself and jumped to the stove with the ease of a teenager. Give it to me. An hour later, the three of them were eating delicious porridge. Jennifer was telling old Barbara her story. She listened to her without interrupting. When the porridge was eaten, the dishes were washed, and the son was put to bed, the women began to talk. Yes, living with a bow hat is still a lot of work. Barbara sighed. You need to be constantly on the lookout here. There's no other way. Oh well, what happened happened. You'll be smarter from now on. What are you going to do next? I don't know. I still have jewelry, but I'm already afraid to sell it. And you take it to the pawn shop. The money, of course, is not great, but without cheating. But look for a job anyway. But where should I go? Tom is still a little boy. I can help look after the baby. 
Of course it's not free. You're going to buy me food. And sometimes a drink. The old woman grinned. Thank you, Barbara. A couple of days later, Jennifer was already standing behind the counter in the store, in the same place where she recently disgraced herself. The sales girls initially treated her with distrust, but then, after hearing her story, they became sympathetic and accepted her into their team. One day, when Jennifer came home from work, she found her son already asleep and Barbara sitting next to him and diligently knitting something. I became completely blind, complained the grandmother. I wanted to knit a sweater for the boy for the winter, but it's not fate. Jennifer remembered. Once, as a child, she was fond of knitting, so far. I didn't decide that I was beautiful. Give it to me, she asked the old woman. What a beautiful blouse you're wearing. Jennifer's friends at the store admired her. You can immediately see the design work. And you say that there is no money. That you found another millionaire? No. I knitted it myself. It can't be. It's true. Can you tie one for me? I'll pay you. Jennifer's friend said. Half a year later, Jennifer quit her job. There were so many orders for knitted things that it was not possible to do everything in time with work. She began to post her work on the internet, and over time, she began to receive orders from all over the world. A couple of years later, the woman opened her own workshop, in which several other girls worked in addition to her. Jennifer has changed her room on the outskirts to a large apartment in a good area. Barbara, of course, moved in with her. Hello. Do you really do all your work manually? A young, beautiful, well-dressed girl came into Jennifer's office. Yes. No cars, everything is manual. The woman smiled. Then I'd like to order something for you. Please. Jennifer gave the visitor her latest catalog and made coffee. Over the sweet chatter, the women did not notice how time flew by. The visitor's phone rang. Honey, I'm sorry. I just came in to order a couple of knitwear for myself. The hostess of the salon turned out to be so nice we chatted. Yes, come on in. The girl dictated the address and explained to Jennifer, my husband is worried where I am. By the way, he's coming over now and we can look after something for him too. Jennifer, Dimitri was standing on the threshold. Inga was as amazed as he was. Do you know each other? Jennifer's visitor looked from Jennifer to her husband in surprise. This is my ex-wife. Mark replied calmly and turned to Jennifer. How are you? How's Tom? Thank you. Everything is fine with us. You don't have to send us any more money. Well, no. I'm not going back on my words. As I said it, I will, even taking into account inflation. But, how are you? Is that all? Mark waved his hand around Jennifer's office. It's all thanks to you. You shoved my face in the dirt in time for me to come to my senses. Seriously? I'm not joking right now. Thank you. Now I am happy and independent. My dream has come true. I have a young man who loves and appreciates me, not a rabid old man.